Let's start with looking at the basis of ovarian stimulation. Natural cycles of ovulation most often release only one egg per cycle. Stimulation protocols for advanced fertility treatment aim to develop multiple follicles while inhibiting ovulation. Three protocols for follicular development are commonly used. Those are Long protocol Short protocol Antagonist cycle Now let us look at the long protocol used for ovarian stimulation. In this protocol, the hypothalamopituitary ovarian axis is switched off by using a gonadotrophin releasing hormone agonist from day 21 of the preceding cycle. When pituitary down regulation is determined by menstruation, endometrial thickness of less than 5 mm a serum estradiol level of under 50 pg per milliliter. Follicle stimulation is commenced with daily dose of follicular stimulating hormone. Follicle development is then monitored using ultrasound follicle tracking, serum LH and estradiol estimations on specified days. Around day 12 and follicles over 17 mm in diameter LH activity is provided using a single dose of HCG in preparation for egg retrieval. Short Protocol The short protocol follows the same principles as the long protocol. However as like GnRH analog is administered along with the stimulation injection of FSH from the start of the index cycle. Initially there is a boost of FSH so that follicle recruitment would be enhanced. The short protocol is ideal for women with declining ovarian functions, such as the older women. The rest of the cycle of follicle development would be the same as in the long protocol. Antagonist cycle the antagonist cycle commences with natural or induced menses and gonadotrophin FSH is started from the beginning of the cycle to complement natural follicle recruitment. The subsequent dose is adjusted based on the ultrasound and endocrine features of follicular development. From day 6 the GnRH antagonist is used so as to block the GnRH receptors and prevent ovulation. During the process of ovarian stimulation transvaginal ultrasound scanning is done to measure the number of follicles, size of each follicle, ovarian size and the endometrial thickness to see the response to the injections. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is an anticipated side effect of ovarian stimulation. Around day 12 of stimulation an injection of beta-HCG is given to mimic the natural LH surge at exactly 35 hours afterwards the ovum pickup is carried out. The beta-HCG injection is important for the final maturation of the ovum as well as it helps in loosening it from the follicular wall. Ovum pickup is carried out transvaginally under local anesthesia. During ovum pickup, the follicles are aspirated while gently flushing with warm Harman's solution under ultrasound guidance. It is then sent to the IVF laboratory in the attached room. Then the embryologists search for ovum under the microscope. Aspirated eggs are then washed to remove the cells in corona radiata and then transferred to petri dish. This is a view of a mature oocyte as seen under the microscope. Oocytes are then incubated up to 6 hours. Now let us look at how semen is processed for YVF or XE. A fresh semen sample is taken on the day of the ovum pickup. It is looked under the microscope to get an idea of the sperm concentration in the motility. The sample is then processed to separate the good quality sperms using swim up and density gradient techniques. This is a sample of processed sperms as seen under the microscope. Based on many factors the embryologists decide whether to perform IVF or ICSI, or both. Listed below are some indications to do ICSI. Severe oligospermia. 
sperms retrieved from testicular sperm aspiration to ESA. Previous failed IVF. Thick zona pellucida of the oocyte. High number of structural defects in the sperm. In in vitro fertilization, sperm droplets are made on a petri dish. Each droplet contain about 30,000 sperm at a zoa. Selected oocytes are then placed in those droplets and incubated for 18 hours for fertilization. This is how it looks like when sperm at a zoa binds around an oocyte. The oocyte decides on which sperm at a zoa it should let in. In intracytoplasmic sperm injection a good quality sperm is selected by looking at its morphology and activity. Initially the selected sperm is made emotile by striking on its tail. Then it is aspirated into a very fine glass tube and taken to the oocyte. Here you see how the sperm is being injected into to the selected oocyte. Fertilized eggs are separated and cultured up to day 3 or day 5. The embryos initiate cleaving and go through 2 cell, 4 cell, 8 cell, cell compact amorella, and finally the blastocyst within an outer cell mass. One or two best quality embryos may be selected to transfer in the fresh cycle and surplus embryos are frozen for future use. Freezing all embryos is suggested for patients anticipated with ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, poor endometrial buildup or if any other unfavorable uterine condition is observed in the fresh cycle. However, due to higher pregnancy rates in frozen embryo replacements freeze all option is given for other couples as well. Embryo replacement Embryo replacement can be done in the fresh IVF cycle or later with frozen embryos. Prior to embryo transfer endometrium is prepared with estrogen containing drugs or a natural cycle could be used. Endometrial thickness should be satisfactory for an embryo transfer. The fine catheter is initially filled and flushed with the culture or media. Then the selected embryo is gently loaded into a soft catheter and taken to the clinician. Number of embryos transferred usually limited to one or two. A trial catheterization is done on all patients before the commencement of the IVF cycle. The replacement is usually done one centimeter below the fundus under ultrasound guidance. After embryo transfer the patient is supplemented with progesterone for a desired period by the clinician. After the replacement is done the catheter is given back to the embryologist to inspect for retained embryos. Two weeks after the embryo replacement serum beta-HCG is tested to see the outcome.